So yeah, third time lucky, yeah? This time I'm on my laptop now, because I just can't. I just can't. This time I just need to log into another live stream and obviously stream it from here, because this is uh, fascinating. I keeps logging out on my phone. I don't know if it's my phone that logs out, because like honestly, like it just keeps logging out. But anyway, your fire's looking in big trouble here. This is the third uh, stream. Stream number three. Third time lucky. Let's hope. Obviously, different views. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how this one. Let's see how this one goes. Um, three knockdowns on your five. What the hell was I talking about earlier? Obviously, I don't know my boxing that well. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Gamalia Fagin is not learning from anything at all. I mean, everybody gets called, of course. <laughs> Gamalia Fagin is not learning from anything anymore. Like, it's true, though. Like, he's really underperforming here. Yeah. Oh, that's a big shot, that. And how do I add? Uh, I need to add. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Joshua. What? See. Joshua. What? See versus. Kamal Yafai. I can't believe he's losing like this. Uh, who else is they are fighting on tonight? Actually, this guy, basically. <laughs> yeah, man, I can't believe it. I can't believe what I am watching. Round number seven, and I've scored this quite wide to Cunningham, who's knocked down your fire, obviously, three times, so it is going to be wide naturally. I mean, that's, 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 that, that's, that's, this is, like, gut-wrenching. Hey, what do I just do now? Oh, man. What about, you just had to stop my live stream now. Things are just not going well for me. If it's not one thing, it's another thing. Anyway, I'm getting back into the boxing. It's like loading now. So let's see how that, let's see how that comes out. Sorry, guys. I want to just quickly, you know, say that my, I don't know why, but I've changed from my phone to my laptop now because I just, you know, I'm not happy with the fact that my phone keeps crashing. It's not my phone. I don't know if it's my phone or if it's the YouTube app, but it just keeps crashing. So it's like kind of annoying. Um, uh, ask away. Ask away. He's walked into how many straight laps tonight is Gamal Yafai? How many straight laps has this man walked into tonight? Cunningham is bossing this fight, man. I wonder, you know, the thing is, though, you know, like Eddie like talks to the guys afterwards. So I'm wondering now. <sighs> sorry, is that a bit bright? Let me, let me adjust my seating because that light can be irritating, I can see in the background. Uh, is that like, like, Yafai is obviously the guy he wanted to win tonight at Eddie. And like, now that Yafai is not Garfield. Yeah, have a look. And now that you're like, your fire is not. Say hello. Okay, down you go. I can't always feature in the in the in the live streams. And that now that your fire looks like he's on his way to losing, right? Like, will Eddie sit with Jason Cunningham and be like, "Well, this is the next step for Cunningham." Like, how does it work? Like, 
does it work where like he starts to now like look at Cunningham and say, okay, cool, Cunningham is now my guy. It's going to be interesting. What do you like? Absolutely right, as you say, Chris. Yeah. Taking any risks now at all with Jason Cunningham, you just see this one out. But just see the way Jamal Yafai is just pressing so crude and so clumsy with his attacks. Next time, I'm just going to start on my laptop. I swear, because like that break in coverage is not good. I don't know if it's a setting on my phone. Just Missing, missing, missing. Man, your fire is persistent, though. Cunningham just dominating. Just dominating. I really did not see this coming. I did not see this coming, guys, to be honest with you. Oh, my word. Cunningham, is he the next man to, to dethrone a prospect? I love this fight. I love the upset aspect. The upset aspect obviously makes me really happy. Good shots, this though. Oh, my word, mate. Laced those shots. Oh my word, this Jason Cunningham has got some serious power, man. Yeah, he's boxing really well tonight. Like, to give him his credit, like, he is boxing exceptionally well tonight. I'm wondering. I should look at my battery is on 48%. This better not back out. This is my last attempt at this stuff. What? Three? He's been knocked down three times as your fire. Dos Santos. Absolutely no name on his record that anybody would recognize. Dos Santos, boy. It's his first outside of France. He comes in with nothing to lose. Jason Cunningham right now is a man with a lot to lose. I can't, I can't believe Jason Cunningham is doing what he's doing, man. It's actually like taking me by a big surprise. Really well. Like it's taking me by a big surprise that Jason Cunningham is actually doing what he's doing. Guys, I don't know. I actually I can't. Oh, it's going to be get in the way of that light there because it's going to be quite anno annoying for the viewers. Like Cunningham is boxing out of his skin here, man. Like I can't believe what I'm seeing. Like it's, I'm still shell shocked from the fact that this is happening. Hey guys, after this fight, I'm going to go run and get my charger cable because I can see problems happening and I can't afford for another stream to be dropped. Man, do I have another? Is there another? Yeah, I'll make a plan. I'm gonna have to make a plan. Oh, big shot there from your fire! Big shot there from your fire! How's it? Uh, 
Oh man, I just I don't know what is happening on these streams. Like, like why they keep dropping? Hopefully this one. I mean, I'm doing this one on my laptop. I'm just thinking it's a problem with my phone, maybe. Oh, nice one there. Gamalia Fire is being bossed here by Jason Cunningham. Like, let's not call. Let's call a, a spade a spade. Like, it's it's easy work. Oh, yeah, fire. I mean, but he's been dropped three times. I mean, this can't bode well for his future. Like, what's next for him type thing. I just want to hear what Eddie Hearn has to say after the fight because, like, Eddie Hearn's going to obviously have his say. Oh, Cunningham looks in trouble. Cunningham looks like he's in trouble with the body shots. <laughs> your fire had a good overhand right there your fire's i mean give him credit so like he's been punished for the fight but his persistence is he's pushing down on him trying to make him tight his persistence is actually helping him a lot here. the referee saying don't push him down he's got giving him his last warning philippines is still the best what do you mean what do you mean Philippines is still the best? In what way, shape, or form? Do you mean boxing? Obviously, we're talking about boxing, but there's no Filipinos on the on the, on the show tonight. It would have been nice. It's going to be Filipinos in South Africa next weekend when uh, Hickey Butler fights, when some Piwe Conco fights. Should be a good show, that. Should be a good show, that. Cunningham boxing really well. Back to the clinical. He's got Helani in the left hand again. But there's a dog inside Gamalia Fire, which just keeps coming, you know, like he, he fights in the trenches, man. No, I didn't. I got a big subscriber base from interviewing. I'm not really a streamer uh, per se. I mean, I've only started doing this recently. So like all my, all my subscribers that come from the interviews I conduct, obviously I'm a journalist. I do it with other people. So it's interesting to hear about their lives. But it's just my turn in front of the the camera to kind of like talk and you know talk us through this uh, this process. So yeah, basically that's that. But if you do watch my channel, you'll see a lot of South African content, which is obviously good uh, for the South African viewers to obviously be seen around the world. South African boxers, I should say, to be seen around the world. Yeah, man. Your fire is he's a, he's a strong heart. Like he's got a strong heart. Um, but Cunningham's winning this fight. You know, I still, I'm still wouldn't be surprised if your fire came back and stopped Cunningham later. Still going. Still, of course. Something out of this fight. He's got nine minutes to try and hang on to his belt. Yeah. Ah, uh, you can't, you can't. There's no robberies. Three knockdowns. Not even a case. Not even a case for three knockdowns. I mean, although it's been one-way traffic, you just get a sense that it's good fights because your fight at any stage can... I keep repeating myself, but he could literally do the business here, man. Oh, your fight is putting the pressure on this round. I think he knows, like his coaching team knows that like it's going to get it's going to get really good. Hey, what's up, Roy from Solo Boxing? How good is this fight between Yefai and uh, what's his uh, Cunningham? Yefai and Cunningham. What a fight this is, man. Uh, um, Yefai, there we go. Yefai's dropped Cunningham to the body, right? But Cunningham, yeah, I'm watching on DAZN. I know like in England you have to watch it on Sky, so it's a bit more difficult. But like Yefai uh, got dropped three times by Cunningham. So it's like, it's so weird because uh, Cunningham can't punch. Here we go. Is my prediction going to come right? Is it going to come right? Because I predicted before the fight that your fight stops Cunningham. 
Oh, that body assault. Oh, it's coming on late now. But Cunningham dropped your fight three times, which is like really surprising. Don't worry. If, if, if my commentary isn't great, there's commentary on the TV that you can hear when I'm not talking. Hey, Cunningham is protecting that body nasty. So your father's got confidence now. But the only thing is, though, obviously, like, your father's brother fought, fought uh, Cunningham, so they're going to make comparisons. Cunningham dropping your fight three times is a big one. It's a big one. I'm going to keep going to the wrong... I don't know, it's... All right, here we go. Oh, my word. Oh, my days. These last two rounds are going to be insane. That was definitely a fire round with the knockdown which makes it a 10-8. So he pulled one knockdown round back. Wow, these last two rounds are going to be hectic. Like Cunningham's going to have to dig deep because it's kind of Cunningham's fight to lose this one. How funny is that? Cunningham was telling his coaching team what's what. Man, I can't wait for the main events. I know there's one more fight after this one. I've been saying it all night. It's been a long night. It's been a good one already. Yeah. Good shot, man. Beautiful shot. As you said, Nadim, great shot there. Oh, mate. What a fight this is and what a comeback story this will be in a fight. If um, Yifai is able to pull this one off, you can see how eager he is to get out there and like do the business. There we go. Round number 11 underway. What are you, a commentator says Cunningham's got to try to stop him in his tracks. Good advice because if you think about it, like Cunningham has only slowed down your fire after he's dropped him naturally. I mean, naturally that'll happen. But I mean, like that's the, the, the real, you've got to make him miss, make him pay. That's simple. It's boxing, man. Wow. There's still, there's still some time left for your fight to pull this one off. A little bit, little, a little bit reckless though from from your fight, like throwing aimless shots at times. Um, the referee is obviously like Cunningham's trying to survive now. I reckon though, if Cunningham loses these last two rounds, he'll still win the fight, unless he gets knocked down again, because that'll make it interesting. But I still think though that ultimately over the twelve rounds, he's had a much better fight. There's your fight. Your fight's got to go back to the body. He's trying to knock Cunningham out of the head now. He's got to go back to the body where he's had most of the success this fight. A lot of punches thrown in this fight, man. Like, this could be a good CompuBox, uh, you know, fight. Surely, man. Surely these two can't keep it up for this long. Garfield, no. One and a half minutes left of round number 11. It's a total slug fest at the moment, but a lot of holding now from Cunningham because he knows he's got to like kind of like stay in the fight. And that's the way to do it. It's kind of like evade the punches, make uh, Yafai miss, and make him tired. Yafai's got a hell of a gas tank. Garfield. He's got, got quite a gas tank on him. Say hello to the six people that are online. Say hello. Cool. Um, yeah, man, it's a uh, it's surprising. Yeah, man, that's just true, man. Like Cunningham's got a pair of ribs on him to be able to take all these uh, punches from your fire, and then like your fire, okay, I was going to compliment his chin, but he's been down three times, so it's a bit uh, it's a bit disrespectful to compliment a chin. But there were more like flash knockdowns. Forty seconds left in the round. Ooh, 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 ooh. your fire with some lacing shots. Oh, good shot that from Cunningham. Now, Cunningham's, uh, you know, despite, I think I, I'd still, I don't know, I still give this 11th round to Yafai. 
But Cunningham's doing the right thing because he's kind of on his bicycles, landing a few good shots, keeping your fight at bay. Your fight's a, a good fighter. Like, he just needs to pick his shots a little bit better, not just throw everything in the, like, you're not fighting inside a phone booth. Like, you've got an entire ring to use, like, stalk him effectively, throw good punches, combinations when, 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 when required. One round to go. That's the end of round 11. I'm interested to hear if Cunningham tells his corner instructions again. They know you're never there until you're there. Like they have to, they have to do it. Like they have to see through this last round. Look, if if he doesn't get knocked out in this last round. Cunningham is the new European Boxing Union champion. Cal Yafai is shouting in the crowd there. Three minutes to stop Jason Cunningham or lose his title. That's a nice headline for, for something. Good shot there. Good left hook there from uh, Gamal Yafai. It's getting tied up there by Cunningham. Cunningham wasting a few more seconds to come towards its results. So very tactical. Yeah, is, yeah, man. So, yeah, no, literally, it has to be a stoppage from your five. He's going to win this fight. I even think a knockdown won't be enough because, like, if you think about it, like, he's been knocked down three times, and then in between that, has he been winning those rounds that have not been knocked down? Not entirely sure because he's getting laced like that. So he's very frustrated. Two minutes left. Oh, you fight. Oh, he's almost pushed him through the rope there. Yeah, you see, Cunningham's trying to survive. Yeah, he's pulling up every second to see if he can stave off this assault. Oh. You can see both guys are, are feeling the effects of a, of a long fight now because they're both... You know, one minute and 30 seconds left in round number 12, but they're both, like, not throwing with as much ferocity. I mean, they are trying with whatever their body can allow. You know, you can see Cunningham's got experience. Like, he's he's really backing up. He's boxed really well. I wouldn't be surprised if they're trying to get a rematch for this fight, so like, just knowing the boxing industry. I mean, I certainly didn't expect Cunningham to do this well. Yeah, as I say, barring something extraordinary here yeah, from your fight, uh, Cunningham has won the fight. Good stuff for this. 30 seconds left. Sorry, guys. I was hardly talking there because I was just watching this. Like It's quite getting quite intense. 30 seconds to go. Um, yeah, 30 seconds to go. Looks like it's... Uh, he's running now. Cunningham knows. 15 seconds left on the clock. He's literally 15 seconds away from winning, uh, taking the title from Gamal Yafai which is actually quite surprising. I can't believe I called it so badly before this fight. I really thought that uh, Yafai would uh, win this fight quite easily. But uh, Cunningham has proved me wrong. That's the fight of the night, guys. That is the fight. I mean, I'm, I can't argue against that being the fight of the night. Yeah, your father's not won that fight. Cunningham's won that fight. Cunningham won that fight for sure, man. Like, it's just... It's crazy. It's crazy. I really didn't see that one coming. Cunningham boxed out of his skin tonight.
<laughs> Crazy to think, man. Crazy to think that uh, that that happened. And and to think that he dropped your fight three times in the process of that as well. Guys, I'm going to read out the results of this fight, and I've already got shoot to get my charger cable. It's not in this room. It's in another room. So straight after this fight, if you just see that light shining in your face, I don't know how I'm going to block it. If I go like this, does it that actually intensified? It's actually that burnt my face like I can't. Um, just bear with it. Don't look at the screen until you hear my voice again. Let's put it that way. Let's see if I log in on Instagram right now. If I log into Instagram live, there should be a whole nother audience. Hold on. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Manchester, we go to the judges' scorecards. Mark Lyson, 115 110. 115 110. Ian John Lewis and John Latham both scored about 114 to 111. 114 to 111. All three to your winner by unanimous decision. And the new champion, yeah, Cunningham deserved that one. Let's let's give credit where credit is, yeah. Cunningham won, like, I mean, that is what it is. Guys, I'll, maybe if I turn it down, there we go. Then you, I need to go get my charger. That is it. Uh, a lesson for fighters always stay ready, especially in this kind of climate. He has done. And wow, is he really rewarded of it? Just a brilliant performance, wasn't it? I mean, of course, he knew what Yafai was going to come and try to do, and they knew they were prepared for it. He picked the right shots at the right time. I don't think any of us expected him to be putting Yafai over. We didn't really expect him to be able to put a dent in, and that was. But when you project forward and extrapolate where you think the fight can be won and lost, it was always going to be how long can he keep that fight off? Well, yeah. it turns out not only could he keep him off for the vast majority of the first half of the fight, but then when they started to trade and Yapo did get close, his power didn't seem to be able to put much of a dent in Cunningham. Aside from that body work that, that slowed him down late, but he showed so much resolve and spirit in those moments that he's, he's a worthy winner tonight on every front. He really is, no doubt about that at all. Another win for Steffi Bull's team as well. But Jim, that's uh, proving to be at the moment. I wonder if this is sinking in for the uh, Olympics to Southport. He's lost to the likes of Michael Conlon and Jordan Bill and Charlie Fire back in the day, of course, Reese Bellotti. And that's why he was considered the best Jason. underdog. For if there was a tagline that was more fitting, the underdog. Who never lost hope. He said, This is my world title fight. You're a European champion in just a brilliant fight to watch from ringside. Yeah. Can you just tell us how you're feeling, presumably elated. Yeah, tired. <laughs> I've got, I watched some serious buses on the feet. I can feel that. The times keep going up here, but I don't have to go much longer. But yeah, I'm on there. I'm buzzing. It's like, set back, ever set back. We're ready from knocking out. We've probably got to push out on bottom. No big come over there. I mean, nothing. They can be in the way. It's really hard, mate. Old school styles, no one's going to have styles. Okay, guys, I'm almost back now. It's going to take. Okay, 
Yeah, man. Thanks for staying on, guys. Got my got my got my laptop on charge now. As you know, what? I'm gonna log on to the Instagram one as well while I'm at it. Um, see what's what. So the coach is, you know, talking. Yeah, sorry guys. So, so this this last fight now, Jason Cunningham's just uh, won a shock. Um, not a sh like it's sh shocking for for the guys that are watching boxing that like your fight didn't win the fight. So like, with respect to that, um, I'm trying to go live on Insta as well. Why not? No, we got we got one more fight before we got the. Before we got the Watsi fight, so you're obviously seeing what's what. I've been begging for this fight for six weeks, and I've got the I've got the European ratings up for Jason, and I said we've probably got a one in four chance this fight's happening, and we've been drafting and drafting three weeks, and he gave us an opportunity, and uh, you know. So we're on the YouTube live, and now we're on the Instagram live because we're way waiting for the Watsi fight, but we got one more fight before that, which apparently. According to the people commenting on the on the YouTube live, is uh, you know one of the one, one of the best fights of the evening, probably the most evenly matched fights. So hoping to see that, hoping to see that fight really soon. I know that the Instagram live always uh, does really well, so hopefully, hopefully more people will log into the on, on, into the YouTube live. You know, the YouTube live also needs some love. I know people are coming on and off today, and Instagram is probably the the right one to use. But uh, I thought I might try the the YouTube live and see what's what. So, guys, if you if you are watching the Boatsi fights, well, not obviously not the Boatsi fight yet, but the the, the Boatsi fight card. Um, hopefully, we're in for a good night of boxing tonight because uh, I can't actually wait for that fight. So, for all you that have the zone or the zone app, let's. Uh, Let's sport boxing. Well, if you are, I mean, if you're doing other things tonight, then so be it. How's it, Ricky Micholas? Good to good to see you. Obviously, going to be trying to cover the, some of the MMA stuff as well, so that's going to be a pretty cool experience. So yeah, happy to see you here. Need more support on the YouTube live, though. To be honest, struggling at the moment. <laughs> struggling, really struggling at the moment. Why are we watching random people talking? Oh, that's the fighter that fought earlier today. Yeah, man, the fighter that fought earlier. Emmanuel Colombo has actually fought on the on, on zone. Thanks for joining the chat. Uh, obviously, this show is not the strongest show I've ever seen, uh, but this last fight was a really good fight. Really, really good fight, this last fight. Just seeing what's happening and, you know, uh, logging into Instagram randomly on a live just to kind of have a chat, see who's who's doing what. Although this guy has become the EBU champion, can't really, like, I don't know. Like, your five foot good tonight, but just not good enough. He got knocked down several times. So, like, so like yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. How do I flip this? There. Yeah, here's the highlights of the fight. So, like, watch this, right? So, Gamal Yafai investing really nicely to the body, was landing really well. And then, like, you know, kind of not... Okay, wait, we watched this one. Round number four was the... I think it was the round that Yafai got knocked down. Yeah, there we go. That was the second knockdown. 
So like after that second knockdown, boom, big shot. And mind you, this guy can't punch, right? So like 28 wins, six wins by knockout. So like Yafai obviously didn't do himself much glory. In fact, Yafai's brother, I mean, that's, that's a, he, he gets up quite quickly though. But I mean, like, hey, how's it, Sebastian? <laughs> Every time you mentioned his own. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you very much, Ray, for that. Yeah, thank you very much, Sebastian Rotham, for logging on the on the, on the the YouTube live. It's been struggling tonight uh, with consistency. So, yeah. But, I mean, you're watching the fights. I mean, I wish I could... Uh, how do I do this? So I can do it. If I go like this, then you'll be able to see some of the some of what's happening out there tonight oh is it a bit bright i think it's a bit bright yeah it's a bit bright so like i can't really see much anyway guys i just popped in on on, on youtube live so i could also like mention that there is i mean ugh, I'm, i popped in on uh, instagram live so i can mention that there is a youtube live at the moment so if you head over to the sa boxing talk youtube channel you can definitely join the uh the watching live uh, if you guys are also watching so yeah keep well see you all soon cool 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 i just want to let people know more about uh, obviously oh that light is striking uh, let people know more about the youtube live so they could log on and have a chat i mean we one fights away from the the main events leron richards versus giovanni de collis is up next uh, apparently according to one of the followers that was on earlier is actually going to be the fight of the night so let's look forward to that roy honestly i know that, I, that that you said i should get paid every time i mentioned design i love this channel it's been the best thing for modern day boxing that they could have been And guys that are online right now if you haven't could you please smash that like button just because it helps out with the obviously spreading the 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 channel out a little bit would be very helpful very useful devin haney devin haney versus jorge lenares are currently discussing what a fight that is um is does lenares have enough in the tank to I mean, he's so dangerous. Like, a, like a prime Linares is something else, man. Like, a prime Linares is 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 serious work. And if you think about, if you think about, uh, you know, Devin Haney and the levels, is it the right time? Probably, because uh, you know, Linares still has something left in the tank, just enough for Devin Haney to get past. I don't see Devin Haney dominating that fight, though. Like, like, what do you guys think? Do you think Devin Haney dominates the fights against Linares? Because I still think Linares got something in the tank, as we saw. Um, when he fought uh, Vasil Lomachenko. Man, I love this channel. They're doing everything, man. Now, if we could get um, PVC like here yeah, permanently, that would be also great. But they don't do as many events that uh, as the zone does with like Eddie. And we get all of that content. Just imagine for only thirty rand a month. Oh, I'm just watching like Lenores, man. Like he's still an assassin. Look at those punches, man. Top rated guys. He was, he was, he, his style is one of the best styles to have for boxing. I mean, you, you, you just can't teach that style. Like not many boxers have a Lenores style. But uh, let me not oversell him because Devin Haney might just beat him. So I don't want to do that. Just like I did with uh, Yafai. Oversold Yafai and then he got beaten by Cunningham. So don't really want to promote that too much. <laughs> One fight away from Joshua Boazzi versus Dos Santos. As the title of the video suggests. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Garfield. Always jumping in on. I've made three streams tonight and he's featured on all of them. Really wants to be on. He knows that when a, when a stream ends, he needs to get his spots in. He knows that he needs to get on the new video just in case no one sees the old video. Always a new audience online. 
We all thought Jim Ali the Crown is potentially the last role of the guys to become European champion again. But interesting, Mario interesting how, like, I don't know the people that are online now might not have been the same people that are online during the Canelo uh, video, but the Canelo video did really well in terms of like viewership. Like, it got 750 views. I mean, for a ch for, for a small channel like like SA Boxing Talk, like that's that's decent viewership for 750 people to log on. And then this fight here, obviously, I'm not sure if many people are excited about Boatsi, but they're not really logging in, like, thick and fast to, to be here. But you know what? We're going to continue to do these live streams as each year, each uh, subscriber gained through this or each, you know, there's a lot of different permutations that come with, you know, just doing things and showing up. So, yeah. Still waiting for this next fight. Next time I'm not going to come on so early. Next time I'll literally come on before the main events. I think doing the entire event was a bit was a bit rough. Yeah. Is the fight on? Yes, the fight is on DAZN. So if you want to watch along and obviously have a chat while we're watching along, it's ideal to do that. So we one fight away from the main event now. Uh, we're just seeing the build up for the this next fight with the uh, what's this guy's name again? Uh, Laurent Richards, and he's fighting Giovanni uh, De Carlos, who's um, eight years his senior. But yeah, the fight is on DAZN. De Carolus, Giovanni De Carolus. From Manchester, England, it's now time for the chief support of the evening. Twelve rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant European Super Middleweight. Yeah, man, obviously tonight's not really a big night. Uh, most people are doing something else. I appreciate those that have come online tonight to obviously show the love. So DeCarolus is working out. I know most people are probably waiting for the, the the main events or do they know who Boatsi is? What's Boatsi going to do, you know? I mean, around the world, people know who Boatsi is, but in South Africa, not really. That's why I'm keen to watch and obviously watch with you guys tonight to see what's happening. I'm, I'm very interested to see uh, Richards, how, how he performs as well. Like, obviously, just learning about him recently. So, let's see how he performs when he's put in with a, a veteran of the game. Here walks out Laurent Richards now. What's his record, man? I need to check his record. Laurent Richards, 14 and 0. I'm still shocked that Jason Cunningham beat Gamal Yafai. I need to look deeper into this Laurent Richards. Can't really punch. 14 and 0, three wins by stoppage. All right, so guys that are watching the fight, be in for a long night. Let's put it that way. Black and yellow. He's wearing black and yellow. He's got a good song called Black and Yellow. Love it. Uh, I remember this song. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. Hey, Darren's doing a good job, but though I feel like tonight's show might be a little bit weaker than usual. Um, yeah, and 
Although I am a big Eddie Hearns fan, uh, it's not sure it's not been, I mean, apart from the Yafai Cunningham, which has been good matchmaking, right? But like the names on this card have not been the biggest. So like Laron Richards is going to be fighting now. He's a decent 14 and 0, but he can't punch. So like, is he going to be the future of the game? Let's have a look at his fighting styles. First time I'll have been, uh, first time I'm going to have uh, been watching him. So let's see, let's see what he's got. England, A-star referee, Mr. John Latham. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant European Super Middleweight Championship. Not much interest in the boxing tonight. Uh, these guys, as I said, no one really knows, I guess. So let's get under, we're getting underway now. Yeah, getting a cramp from sitting out watching, doing. Uh, it's a good level fight. Good level fight. Giovanni de Carolis. Carolis. Love this. Love the ring announcer. Let's see, Laron Richards, boy. Laron Richards, 14 and 0, three wins by way of knockout. No, but like, let's see, let's see what he can do. Maybe, uh, maybe we we prejudging him. <laughs> yeah, real audio. Leron Richards. Richards. Okay, the fight's almost underway, so I'm going to get off my phone real soon, but I'm obviously just chilling before the fight's uh, replying to messages. Okay, cool, 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 cool. cool. We just want to get underway now. Um, I was on my phone between between that. Let's see, let's see. Hopefully, I'm hoping that Laurent Richards has developed some uh, some punching power in the last uh, ten seconds and uh, comes and does some some damage and develops in his in his game. Really cool gloves, though. I wonder, I wonder what brand those gloves are. Oh, he's working under Dave Caldwell. Good coach, that. Good coach is Dave Caldwell. He's got a nice name, Sniper. So he's obviously quite an accurate guy, that must mean. If he's been called the Sniper, like whoever gave him that name must think he's like a really accurate puncher. But the Carolus looks quite strong though. Like he looks like he's quite like put together. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 Roy, tell me something. Do you think that uh, Leron Richards has got the ability to go all the way? Because like he's obviously um, he's obviously undefeated. So like, but like he's been built right. So has he got ability to go? To take that step, yeah, the Carolus is a good name to have on your record. Well, I wish I could. I wish I could uh, bring up another, like another. Like, can I bring you on? Is it possible? I don't know if I can bring you on. It's not like it's not like Instagram where you can bring someone into the live. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited to to see then uh, how he performs. But his punching power, like three knockouts though in the 14 wins. What do you what do you make of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about like the punching power because like when you step up to world level, you need to have a bit of resistance and sting to keep those like top notch guys off of you. Let's see if I can raise my laptop. 
Maybe that's better. Ah, oh, maybe that's better. That it's a view from up there, then. You know, I've just put it in the way of the TV, but. Uh, yeah. Is that a bit? This is a much better angle than previous, like. So, like, his record is good for the amount of fights. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about you're talking about De Carolus because I think De Carolus is obviously a, a a veteran of the game. So to have his name on your record obviously means a lot. Oh, De Carolus going a little bit overboard there. Yeah, Lerone Richards winning that first round. He's comfortable. He's got a nice style. I guess he's uh, tough guys, hard to put away. But you're right, he should have got more knockouts. The thing is, like, with the British scene, is like some of these journeymen, right? Like, from what I've noticed, they just come to survive. So maybe it could partly be that. It could partly be that. Who's breathing like that? Can't be him. Oh, okay. It's a... Uh, it's your favorite boxer that's breathing like that. Jeez, wow, hydrates are everywhere, hey? Like they're on all the boxing sponsors, everything like that. It's like I want to be hydrated by them too now because they got all the stuff. You know, that's marketing for you, huh? That is marketing for you. Get them on board the channel. You know what? Like, I, I've been thinking about a lot of options, Roy, about getting like sponsors on the channel and so forth. And it's just like, it's so difficult because, like, while hydrates obviously you don't operate in South Africa, so it'd be a bit difficult. But like, there's got to be there's got to be ways. We'll speak in private about that. So obviously, there's got to be ways to, to to get around things. So Laron Richards got kind of popping the jab out there. You know, just the character just looks well put together. Just a strong guy, but hasn't presented any like real threat yet. Next, just replies that message real quick. Nice, nice punch power there. Yeah, he's backing up the like Lorraine Richards obviously like knows. Man, if it wasn't for like a copyright and stuff, like I would have loved to have shown everyone the fight, you know? Everyone, two people in the thing, like uh, the fight. I mean, people keep logging in and logging out, and you know, now there's like, like not much. Like in this current one, right? Like 41 people have logged in and logged out according to the stats there that I just checked. So, like, you know, it's just about re uh, audience retention. At this moment, like these fights are not that exciting, to be honest. What's Mike having to say? Yeah, I think he's got. You know, the thing is though, like Harry, you make a good point because like his gloves are kind of big, and like maybe there's a problem with his knuckles. Like, does he want to protect his knuckles? Is that the reason why his gloves are so big? Does he understand that he doesn't have power, so he kind of goes for like the more comfortable cuts? Oh, not stuff there. Yeah, Richards is definitely a bigger guy. But he's not like he doesn't have that like power. No, no stuff. Good round. I actually, actually credit Richards. He boxed quite well. 
Like he's got a nice, he's got a nice style. And they're making it like it's a big thing. Eh? Daniel Dos Santos is fighting Joshua Boatsy in the next fight, and like Dos Santos, if he can beat Boatsy, if Dos Santos can upset, if, if he can upset. Like he therefore goes into like a, like a new dimension because he gets like the WB international title. He gets to run away with things, you know. Round number three. Round number three of 12. I think we're in for the long haul on this fight. You know, just clinical boxing from Laron Richards uh, so far. Nothing really lacing through. Like, no big shots have been really landed. Um, yeah. Nah, it's, it's not the uh, the fight that uh, I was dying to watch, but you know, Eddie's got to promote the guys that are doing really well. It'd be nice to see him against a top level fighter. So obviously, he's got to go through the, the sort of steps, and this is like the step that Laurent Richards has got to take before he gets to that next level. So we've got to be like, you know, just comfortable with the fact that, you know, he, he's going through the paces. But I think as a, a co-main event, maybe a poor choice to put this as a co-main. This is more of like an undercard sort of uh, fight. I would maybe put your five versus Cunningham above this fight uh, just because of, uh, just because of the good matchmaking. Oh, nice body shot there. Laurent Richard working nicely. So one two up and then just the, the yeah, he's a southpaw, so the right hook to the body. Really working well. Um, the fight, uh, Boatsy is is the next fight. Uh, at the moment, it's uh, Laurent Richards against uh, the guy from Italy. Uh, and it's in round three at the moment. I don't know, Roy. I don't know if it's the best card. You know, like, I'm used to Eddie Owens putting on, like, absolute like big names i suppose it's just the names that are not big that put me off a little bit but like i don't know I'm not the biggest fan of this fight card see when the commentators start mentioning demetrius andrade eh, andrade then they kind of like you know they want to talk about other fights but yeah Lor uh, lauren richards is uh, i suppose a guy that's you know the British fight fans will know more of. They would have seen him before. Like he's the sniper. So far, I've seen two guys that I want to follow their careers uh, on this fight card, and I'll mention um, is uh, the guy in the first fight. What's what, what, not, not the first fight, the second fight. Uh, obviously, Jason Cunningham was one of them. Was one of them I want to follow? What's happening? And the guy in the first fight, I think it was Smith. Was it Smith? Yeah, Dalton Smith. At least I didn't get that wrong. Uh, Dalton Smith, I want to see what's happening with his career. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, uh, Thomas King, Dalton Smith looked exceptional. Like, he's someone he's someone that uh, is exciting because his punch power is, like, he's really accurate. So, like, can't miss it. De Carolus is, 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 is hardly landing punches, and I don't know if it's partly due to Laron Richardson's style or if he's, you know, kind of confined to the fact that he's 36 and you have for a payday. Well, Dave Caldwell is a good coach. He's well followed. Him and Adam Booth, you know, the, are, the two, are the two ones I like in England. And uh, just listening to what he has to say, Dave. Caldwell, because I always like to, I like to listen to the corner stuff because the corner stuff is really, really important. What do you mean, Roy, when you say you think it's the latter? Oh, what I said. Right, 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 right. Yeah. 
I suppose give like 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 Laurent Richards is more of like a like a like a chess match boxer. Like he calculates his approach, he brings it in, and like he's not really a guy that's just going to bomb out there. So he's got like the, the the classical side to like boxing where he's like a okay, I'm just about to hand him out a credit like a Pernell Whitaker, but like I mean he's got decent defense. I mean not in that mold, but most certainly in that style region. Oh uh, yeah, I think he is here for a payday. Good call. You know, I honestly I, that that's what I that's what I'm thinking too. Like, he's not really throwing much. He's covering up and kind of like pop, 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 hitting the guards, and then he's coming back with the big shots. Like when I mean big shots, I mean like relative, like not like Canelo Alvarez stuff. He's missing, but I, I you know what's what I've identified is Laurent Richards' defense is top notch. I'll quickly have a look at uh, the stats on this current one. Oh, this particular stream's done decently. Yeah, it's interesting to kind of like watch the labs back because, like, well, not for me, I won't watch my lab back, but like for other people on the outside because then they can kind of get a sense of what happened and like a real version of events, you know, like not not just someone that can just say, ah, oh, I thought this guy won. Like you get like actual reaction. Oh, great body shot there from Laurent Richards. If this fight like staggers for like 12 rounds straight like this, it's going to be quite, uh, going to be quite sad. Let me see something of this though. Super middleweight. Brenner Liebenberg's weight. Canelo Alvarez's weight division. Super middleweight. It's very difficult to not be able to be a puncher. You have to be a puncher in super middleweight division. Nice, nice shot there from the sniper. Laurent Richards with a nice one two. He landed he missed he landed the jab on the glove, but then the left hand connected with great aplomb. I don't understand some of the fighters. They get nailed and they get all upset and they get all like flustered. Like De Carolus is getting all flustered now. Like he's trying to show like emotion, but like you got hit. Okay, it's cool. Like move on and move on to the next phase. Like don't get upset. Like you got clipped. You got clipped. It's one hundred and one in boxing, man. Laurent Richards is just teasing him with the with the range, getting under the shots again. I actually like Laurent Richards. I would change my mind on him. I mean, I, I like a, I like boxers that can punch, but I'll accept. He's got a little bit of a, a dance shuffle going on there. He's a little bit of a character as Laurent Richards. I'll accept it for this because he's such a clean boxer. I think he'll develop power, though. Like, I think some guys can develop it over time. Like, if you looked at, uh, what's that other English fighter? Josh Warrington. Like, he couldn't knock out anyone in the beginning. And then he came on and he got a lot stronger as his career went on. Yeah, Joshua Boatz is there, the Ghanaian born uh, man that represents Great Britain now. Guys, four rounds into this fight. Uh, four rounds into this fight. Quite exciting. I think he's like 20. Uh, Thomas King thinks he's like 29. Let me actually go check how old he is. Because then he's got to get a move on, right? It says he's 28 on box trick. So close enough. Close enough. Like, he's, he's in that range. So, like... Because he's in that range, he needs to get a move on with his career. He's he's fourteen and zero, potentially going to go fifteen and zero after this fight. So like, um, yeah, but he'll definitely fight. I mean, if we if he's with Eddie Hearn, right, he'll definitely go on and fight some of the bigger names in in the not too distant future. Maybe a couple of guys from Germany, because it seems like like he's fighting this guy from Italy. He's having some good success, and they kind of like the way this Italian guy's fighting is kind of like a German fighter where they kind of just like walk up like this. I know it's like Arthur Abraham style, but like that's kind of like what he's doing. Yeah. And I'm sure like when he gets better opponents, he'll level up too. Like I'm sure many people will see him as a dangerous opponent because I mean, we're in round number five now. He hasn't lost in the first four rounds and he's looked really good. He's actually like, he's like a bigger version of, Ooh, I don't know. Maybe this is not an accurate call. Like a like a bigger version of Ericsson Lubin. Yeah. I'm enjoying this one. I'm like I'm enjoying it from a classical point of view. It's not like, not like a fight that I'm going to remember like in ten years' time probably, or maybe I'll remember it. But like just from a classical point of view, like just 
his precision, his volume, like everything's on on point, just the power that's missing. As he, as he progresses and he keeps walking with Avery, he goes through bounce like this. Oh, there we go. De Carroll is uh, landing a nice shot there. Nice left hook over the top, kind of like one of those like no look left hooks. Loving it. Like he's starting to show glimpses of maybe how good he was during his younger days. Yeah, maybe not next week even. You're right. Look, uh, I'm hoping that the Boatsy fight makes up for the whole... I mean, okay... Granted, I love the Cunningham your five fight. Like that was my favorite fight of the evening. And then obviously learning about Smith, and obviously he's a huge prospect in the UK, according to a guy that was on one of my previous streams. He was talking about like how big a name he is coming through the ranks. And he's also got Sonny Edwards' coach as his coach. So that was obviously a, a big thing that I've learned uh, about tonight, which is also one of the, the the purposes of doing one of these things is to learn about uh, the boxing game. Woo! Nice punches, Laurent Richards. Going for the classical right hook, left hook. South ball. Digging deep. So, he has a question, right? I asked this question earlier, but no one gave me an answer to it. Is Boati considered Ghanaian or is he considered British going into this fight? Or does the result, does it depend on the result? Like, I'd really like to know that, that answer. Because, like, on Boxrec, he's British. But he's obviously birthplace is Ghana. So, so Thomas King saying, yeah, the first time I saw Dalton was during was during fight camp, vicious knockout. He looks like, a, like an exceptional knockout artist, doesn't he? He lands so crisp. And then solo boxing. Uh, so Richards is ranked number five in the UK. And he has some very tough competition in front of him. Who are the guys? Who are the guys? That, oh, you have like Callum Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. There's a lot of guys, actually. You're right. Interesting. Virgil Hunter is Boatsy's coach. This is a recent event. No, I'm interested to see. Yeah, John Ryder, Billy Joe Saunders. But Saunders might not box for a couple of years after that fractured orbital bone. That was really that was a really strange cutaway. Really strange cutaway that was. Round number six. Halfway through this uh, uh well, no, sorry. We've run five five rounds completed, almost halfway through this contest. I think he tries though at times to hit hard, but I mean, at times in Floyd Mayweather's career, it looked like he was hitting guys like really hard. He just didn't drop them. So like, the master of disguise, it's the sniper. Five rounds in the bag. I think he's won all five rounds. To be honest with you, I don't think he's been troubled. He's just keeping in the rhythm, keeping keeping the guy on the outside. Well, he's on the outside. Sorry, the guy's trying to come on the inside. He's sticking it out on the outside, keep making the guy miss. There, yeah, nice shot there, nice shot there. Landed on the glove there, but like grazed a little bit of the head. You know, one thing I wanted to mention, and uh, this, this was a bit earlier in one of the, my in, in one of the other live streams I was doing, was that matchroom i've got a I've got a walkthrough from, from one of the one of the trainers i was having a, a call with matchroom have their own barber like you could go get your haircut before the fight i mean if you think about it if you came like without a haircut before the events how nice it is to be on a matchroom card where they can just sort you out give you a fresh fade I'm sure most guys would prefer their own barber but i mean sure anyway back to the fight uh levels to this game Laron richards just showing uh some flames to this Italian boxer. Nice, man. Like, he's just established a rhythm from round one and he's kind of just gone with it and he hasn't let up as Laurent Richards. Nice right hook to the body there, but again, like, there's, there was just no substance to that shot. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, so trying to we we. I saw Virgil Hunter. Yeah, Virgil Hunter is the the trainer of uh, Wetsy now. Just trying to think, like, if Leron Richards continues like not knocking guys out, right? Will he still be afforded the opportunities to fight the bigger fighters? Because we've seen like Demetrius Andrade, who can't really punch and he struggles to get fights because he's not entertaining enough. So will the same thing happen with like Leron Richards, where like if he boxes and doesn't knock guys out? And that's where like matchmaking becomes crucial because obviously this Italian guy's quite tough. Darts, Laurent Richards knocks him out. I mean, his gloves look like pillows. I don't know. Like, would you do you think do you think that he'd become a, a star in boxing if he can't knock guys out? It's very difficult. Um, yeah, man. Virgil Hunter is uh, Virgil Hunter is is a good coach, tried and tested. Can't go wrong. I think Boatz, he made the the move just before this fight, I think. I think it was. I read some story about it. So I could be wrong. Uh, solo boxing might correct me on that one if I am wrong. Dave Caldwell, of course, the coach of Leron Richards, for those that aren't that haven't been on the stream or have logged in. It's a good coach, man. Good, good, good corner tactical instructions. Him and Adam Booth, I said, they're on par with regards to corner instructions. So, like, funny enough, like, not every card is going to be the biggest and best card, but this card. In terms of, you know, guys coming up through the ranks, few future stars has definitely produced one or two, one or two names. And this Laurent Rich is another guy. Obviously, he's been on people's radar, but I kind of enjoy the classical approach. Even though you're gonna have to sit and listen to me talk for another twenty minutes probably, because that'll be the extent of this fight. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Six rounds uh, in the bag. We're in round number seven. Six rounds up for Laurent Richards. Interesting to see. I mean, I don't think a judge would would would, would give uh, the Italian fighter a round. He hasn't really done much. He hasn't uh, thrown punches. It's just he literally is just walking forward with a poor jab, which is like it's a very like lazy. And then he comes like, and then sometimes he's like, like you know, he's like very. Um, he's here for a payday, guys. I don't know how else to slice this bread. Like he's here for a payday. Like he just wants to see 12 rounds. He's had, an, he's had an okay career, but he's making some money. Like We can let him off the hook, right? We can let him off the hook for now because, like, I mean, he is kind of here to build on Richards, I suppose, in a way. Like, without being disrespectful, I think that's kind of what it is. And Laurent Richards, 28 years of age, he's got to get a move on soon, super middleweight. Uh, he can box, man. Like, like he's going to be a nightmare for someone that 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 that, that just steps up because of the because of the style and how awkward he is. He, he can be a difficult fight for anybody. But his Everlast gloves, like they're both wearing Everlast, like they look like. Like the like the big pillow, like not even like the small pillow that you sleep with, like the big one that you use for aesthetics. Like, if you didn't have a pillow, you could grab this man's gloves and have a comfortable night's rest. Nice movements, like Richards gets in under, really nice stuff. Yeah, this is this is good. Just classic. Oh, nice uppercut there from Ron Richards. Like sneaky uppercuts. Sneaky, sneaky stuff. He has me saying, please may this fight be over soon. Let's get to that main event. Ron Richards. Classical outboxing. 
to travel, is he? Just building his future. Completely outboxed and, and befuddled to this stage. He hasn't won any moment of any round to this point. Yeah, I mean, the commentator agrees with what I'm saying. Like, as I said, I've got an earpiece to what I'm saying. Like, one of the constant viewers is definitely a commentary member because, like, Leron Richards has won every single round. Where Giovanni, so Giovanni has won a minute of any round, as, as Chris said. I love it when I qualified and it goes exactly according to plan. That's a good feel. Let's have a look at the stats. Much better this time around. Constant live, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, round number eight, seven rounds in the bank. We are almost there, four rounds away from this fight completion and a, and, a, and, a, and a shut out unanimous decision. We're getting there, guys. We are getting there. Any anything you want to ask me while we while while while, while we're sitting here and uh, watching this one sided fight? So open to taking in questions. And uh, questions about other fights, you know, like uh, if you have any pertaining to, to obviously not this one, but other ones, because like Laurent Richards is one way traffic at the moment. Getting closer and closer to the Boatsy fights. You know what? I'm going to start a topic after this one. I just want to see what happens. Uh, why am I even getting surprised about that? Let's talk about uh, boxing locally. Boxing, boxing, boxing. This fight is a bit of a. We are four rounds away from people that are just logging in and stuff. We're still four rounds away from Boatsi versus Dos Santos. Um, Leron Richards versus. Uh, De Carlos. Brandon Figueroa versus Lewis Neri in the morning. Are you going to stay up for that one? Are you going to stay up for that one? I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. What a busy day tomorrow. I don't know if I can. But maybe I picked the wrong show. Maybe I should have reserved my energy. And uh, But I really wanted to see Boatsy. Ir irrespective, I wanted to see Boatsy fight tonight. So like, that's kind of why I came on. To do this one, uh, the rest of the card didn't really pull me, but it is what it is. Sleeping and gonna wake up. I did that for like the Canelo one. Like I was like, well, Canelo, uh, but Canelo is a different story, right? So Canelo is like a real. But you, you're a boxing enthusiast for getting up for Luis Neri. The problem I've had with Neri over the years, right? He's a great boxer, but he keeps missing weight all the time, and it frustrates me as a fan because like you want to see a bit of professionalism. Every Sunday morning, yeah. I mean, I'm making I'm making a habit of it too nowadays. You know, I like there was a stage in my there was a stage in, in my in my watching boxing as a fan that I would just like not wake up fights, and uh, I've started to do it again because. Uh, I just decided that uh, I need to take boxing a lot more, like as a journalist, like I've got to take boxing a lot more serious internationally. Like I was watching the local fights and as you know, the local fights obviously happen at a decent hour. We always watch them, but like internationally, I need to start seeing who's who. And that's kind of one of the reasons I was excited about tonight to learn about these like English boxers. Thomas King, he's moved up to bantamweight. So hopefully he doesn't have, yeah, uh, super bantamweight, yeah. So, but you say that, but you know what? The guys even get more comfortable. Like Lewis Neary, I mean, because he's going up in weights, I mean, maybe he makes weight now, but like in the future, because he's moved up in weights, he might miss that weight, you know, like just being comfortable. Yeah, it's, just, it's just about being comfortable and like, like if you sign a contract, right? Like stipulating that, okay, I've, I'll make weight for this fight. I, I will, you know, you're signing a contract saying that you're going to do it. Yeah, Lewis Neary is definitely going to be the favorite though. Like Neary. Looks like he's a relatively stiff mover. 
Neri is definitely the favourite to win that fight. Round number 10. We two round, uh, three rounds if you include this one. Oh, no, we're round number nine. I, thought, I swear I heard the guy say round number 10. So, do you guys think, here's a question I'm posing to you guys, right? Thomas, Nadim, do you guys think that Dos Santos can beat Boatsi tonight? Because they're both undefeated. I mean, surely they're both in with uh, a chance. It's a WBA international title. There's a lot on the line. I mean, De Santos has never had a good name on his record, but what's is the first guy he's stepping up to. Kind of don't know what happens. It happened. Uh, it happens all the time where guys step up and they, like, you don't know much about their careers and they just do well. Yeah. Also, I don't know much about Dos Santos either. That's what makes it scary fights sometimes. I mean, he could be really bad. He could be really good. Look at his box rec. Like, if you go and look at his box rec, like, you'll see that he hasn't really fought top-notch guys. You know, the guys that have... Um, Boati's last opponent was also unknown. To, yeah. Look, Boati is definitely the one that everyone's going to watch, though, right? So, I mean, everyone logs in and tunes in because Boati is very well promoted by Eddie Hearn. So, like, everyone's to see what's his hype about. I've heard so many things, like, about this kid that suggest that he's, like, the real deal. So, if you can produce, that'll be great. Like, you hate it. Like, I hate it when guys are, like, hyped up, right? And then they're just flat to deceive. And sometimes guys can be overhyped, but I think in this instance, he's he, he can be uh, legit because he's got, what, 11 knockouts and 13 wins? I don't know. I like guys that have a bit of power. Maybe I'm a bit biased towards that. Round number nine is almost over. Just a shutout performance here. Laurent Richards taking... De Carolus to to town. Overmatched is a good call from the commentator. But <laughs> Laurent Richards is a difficult. He's a difficult fight, man. Like he's just elusive. Like he moves really nicely. Not my type of fighter, but like I appreciate the art. See, there you go. Round number nine is done. Three more rounds in the bag. Then the main event starts. Can't wait for that main event to start. Guys, I'd appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed and you're online, could you hit that subscribe button? Because like, I do produce, I am a journalist. I produce content on the basis of South African boxes and obviously when South African boxes travel abroad. But it's, it would be nice if I could pick up a few subscribers while talking to uh, on a stream. Let's put it that way. Obviously, it's still a growing audience, as we see. But this fight card isn't really the one that was going to pull in spectators, was it? But uh, thank you for everyone that has come online. I do appreciate uh, the support. It's obviously... It's really cool to be able to chat to uh, people that I don't usually get to chat to. That's uh, sort of the the bonus of, of, of tonight. Round 10 of 12. So this is now three rounds to go, including this round. I don't know. He looks like he wants to knock out this guy, the Carolus. Like, like, um, uh, Laurent Richard looks like he's actually got intent to knock him out. Like, he's trying because the Carolus is not giving him anything. He's just kind of standing there, guards up, protecting himself at all, you know, at all, at all costs. Mm 
My goodness. Nice there, nice, nice stuff there, nice stuff there, Laurent Richards. Once you, every now and then, like a good left hand gets through to Carolus as like guards, and it's like good clean punch. Oh, nice stuff there. Put a nice combination together. It's like uh, the Italian's like boxing a ghost, man. Like, you just can't hit the guy. Laurent Rich is in, out. He's so good, actually. Like, I'm, 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 I'm starting to appreciate him over time. Like, it took me 10 rounds to start, like, really appreciating the guy. But, yeah, man. Really good stuff. I'm starting to land like some good shots there. Like even that straight left that Laurent Richards just landed straight through the guards there. In and out, in and out. I mean, it's so hard to hit. Nah, he's one to watch, eh? He's one to watch. Let me add him to my list. I'm adding ones to watch. And I think, I think he is going to go on to, I'll follow him on Instagram. Commentators, right? It's not like the most exciting boxer to watch, but it's effective. It's hard to fight. Him. It's hard to fight a guy like him. It's hard to fight a guy like this guy. Laron Richards. Laron Richards, right? 10, 10, it'll be 10 rounds to nothing. Just a good boxer. Just two rounds to go after this one. Just a good boxer, is Laurent Richards. I like how calm Dave Caldwell is when he dishes out like corner instructions. I know I've been saying that, but like, like if I was a boxer in England, like I might choose him as my coach. To be honest, like I know he just doesn't accept like like anyone because he's a really good coach. But if I had that option and if I was like coming out of the Olympics, I'd probably pick him. Just the way, like just the way he's so calm and like that would that would match that would match my personality if I was. I mean I did do amateur boxing, but not to this level. I had a handful of fights, man. Let me let me let me let me let me be honest. But amateur boxing I had, uh, I had three fights, three wins, but what does it mean now? It was fun getting in the ring. So anyway, two minutes and 30 seconds in left in round number 11 as we go along. It is the question though, isn't it? Because he's hit Giovanni De Carolis with a lot of shots, even if it's not one punch and cuts and knockout stuff. There's been a, a oh man, what else is what else? Which other YouTubers are online and aren't doing live streams and stuff like it's a difficult build to comment on, difficult fight to, to talk about this one. No, I think he's good. I think this Laurent, like, like solo boxing said earlier, like, I think that uh, this guy, this guy's good, man. He's got the metal to go all the way. He's got a nice slick style. 
the vast majority of the contest. And he wouldn't do that if he wasn't respectful of the power. This play cool was had Tony Bailey on the pads for years. He said Richards can really, really bad. He knows the fighters, he knows the blood of bunch of You can hear the, the shots. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with his power. It, it's just, like you say, is there, is there quite enough there to get guys to look at him and think, yeah, I can beat this guy, especially if they've got world title ambitions of their own, because if they have, he's just going to be just the sort of fighter that, unless the money's right, that they're not going to take him. Yeah, he is a little bit too good for his own good, isn't he, Leron Richards? Oh, nice clean crisp punches there, left hook, oh sorry, right hook, straight left. Yeah, that's the problem that this guy's going to have, like, it's going to be low pay for like a huge risk. Huge risk that uh, Leroy Richards presents in fighting a guy with such a slick style, such a such a, a slick puncher in out, good side to side. You know, you got to be, you got to, you got to respect someone like him because he's going to be as the guys move up in ranking, he's going to be a tough fight. Anyway, eleven rounds done. Uh, Leroy Richards winning all eleven rounds, in my opinion. One round to go. Let's see. Let's see how this last round. And then one more round, and then we can get to that main event fight between Joshua Boatsi and uh, Daniel Dos Santos. That's the fight we all here to watch, isn't it? Hey, and Caldwell's right. Drop, drop. And that's what Laurent Richards has been doing this entire fight, is drop, drop. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, he's not breathing, really. It's been, it's been more like a glorified sparring session. This one, more like a sparring session. Virtual Hunter is using Empire Tap. Interesting. The twelfth and final round. Let's get this. Let's get this. Leron Richards, nice little body shot there. Right hand to the body. My commentary, I've saved my energy for the last fight, so let's let's hope it lives up to expectation. Nice little nice little jabs of the body there. Uh, Leron Richards coming into some steam. Yeah, he's just holding off nice, nice little left hand to the to, uh, to the top of the head there. Leron Richards still maintaining his side to side. Good right hook as he pivots around at the angle. Got to give him credit for the pivots. Again, getting under. De Carolis is coming, but he's coming very late. He's lost all 11 rounds. Thinking he's going to win at this stage is going to be far-fetched unless he has the knockout on Leron Richards. But Leron Richards still, I think he's defensively sound. He'll be able to see out this round even if he had to um, undergo a last uh, a last minute onslaught from De Carolis. I'd like to hear what Eddie Hearn has to has next for uh, for Leron Richards. Imagine him. I think he's got options though. Like Eddie's got options all over the world. Like he could match him in America. Like there's options. Like it's not going to be too much of a nightmare unless he just has to. Try to find him fights in the local scene. That could be a nightmare because of guys trying to avoid, like, how dangerous he is. And then do they just bring in another guy, like this Italian guy, who's just going to stand there and plot, or, like, plot up and just stay there the whole time? That's going to be an interesting concept to see um, how how it works. There you go. He lands a good right hand. They did it to Carolus. Probably the best shot he's landed all the fights, uh, all, all fights, and it's one minute and ten seconds left um, in the bounce. Nice no, right hook to the body there from Leron Richards. Yep, skipping, slipping, and then dropping the left hand, popping the jab, in making the careless miss again. Last round before the Boatsi fight, 40 seconds to go. Leron Richards is doing exactly what he's done all fights, which is which is pivot. Um, boxer, boxer's man well you know you got to give him credit for credit is due oh nice little peekaboo little shot there right hook to the temple Laurent Richards I mean there's something with the, the, the he's 28 I was about to say he's a kid there's something about him though that's like that's interesting and I'm going to keep I'll keep watching up, 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 up. it's nice that I get to learn about him now though 
Not sneaky style. For the last few seconds of this one, master glass stuff from Lerone Richards. That stuff, yeah. Lerone Richards. I'm saying Lerone, it's Lerone Richards. So that's 12 rounds to nothing to Lerone Richards. Last fight before the Boazzi versus Dos Santos fight. Lerone Richards, the co main event of the evening, fighting the Italian De Carolis. Easy work, man. Easy work. Nah, there's no way the judge could have given De Carolis a round there. That's insane. There's nothing there. It's been a total. Breeze. Yeah, yeah it was like a, a glorified sparring session for Lerone Richards, that was. <laughs> Hopefully for the main events, a couple more people will pop into the chat and actually have something to say. Because I think as we warm up, it's a bit long, at this live stream, obviously. It's a bit long to be on for the entire card, but it's going to be great because uh, the main event is starting at about, I'd say, about 10 to 15 minutes so let's see how that's uh the time plays out before then uh they can't be like this i'm sorry like if, if there is even a round given to uh the carolers there's, there's gonna be there's gonna be a march no, like the, the the judges should be judged as well. Like how good is their judging, and they should be thrown onto. They do a horrible job. So let's see what the let's see the scorecards here. Laron Richards, Laron Richards, I should say. Well, it should be what you like. There are specific criteria by which boxing is scored, and, and all judges should really be. On Telling I got into shape for this fight, but it's, you know, imagine getting into shape just to come in and collect a paycheck. Like I wouldn't even be motivated. Maybe comes into question whether the scoring system itself is a little bit outdated. Is a ten-nine scoring system the best way to reflect so much nuance within each individual round? Let's have a look at all the judges. Let's see the ring announcers about to read up the scorecards. I'll, 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 I'll. To get his hand raised. Report back now. Just give me a second to listen to the scorecard. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here in Manchester, England, we go to the judges' score totals. Ian John Lewis and Ansi Panagoki both scored about 120 to 108. Francisco Ayosa Rosa scored about 119 to 109. All three for your winner. By of course, the Italian judge gave the Italian box to the one round, which I didn't see happening. But otherwise, 120 to 108. Yeah. Oh, oh, Spanish judge, sorry, my bad. Spanish judge gave it to him. Gave one round to De Carolus. <laughs> nah, one way traffic. Laron, Laron Richards, uh, easy work. But anyway, next fight Joshua Bet, um, Boazzi uh, against uh, Daniel Dos Santos. Can't wait for that fight to come up now. Oh, man. I mean, doing well for himself is Lerone Richards. I mean, that was a clinical performance. He certainly didn't do didn't do himself anything bad. I thought he was. I think he's top notch. Someone to watch in the future. Wow, he has managed to maintain his levels for like 12 rounds doing the same thing. That's good. Hey, there we go. A Boazzi getting ready on the pads with Virgil Hunter. Why are they doing slow mo? Because it looks terrible in slow mo, this pad work. A few visits in the gym from Andre Ward as well, a man who he much admires. I wonder how, how I wonder how that is because like Boatsi obviously is now training in America, right? As a Ghanaian born but British fighter, like I wonder how like how that move came together. Because if I think about it, like it would have made sense maybe just to stay in Britain. You know, like it's very rare that Black people leave from England to America and vice versa to go train. It's really the exception. Usually it's like a training camp or something like that. But uh, yeah, let's hear from 
Lerone Richards and see what he has to say for himself. British Commonwealth and now European champion. Tricky night's work, but you made it so, so easy. Did you even support yourself then? No, I said to you before, after the Timo Lane fight, I can do this to anyone. Anyone in the division I can do this to. Very, very confident young man. Well, 28-year-old, very, very confident man. How much of this is about momentum now? Um, 14 fights in nearly eight years. Yeah. It's not enough. But it feels like you seem to be getting things. What's that? I just hear that right. He's had an eight year career. Not having to rebuild and start again and shed ring rust every time. I believe everything happens for a reason. Oh man, I've got to check that, man. You know, everyone has told me in the past. Um, I can't believe what I've just heard. I've been working very hard on my boxing IQ. He turned pro in 2013. He's only had. This is now his 15th fight. How? In England, how? How is it possible in a country like England where they give you action like every, like this boxing every week in England? How they managed to get that wrong? I'm now in a position to get these bigger fights to showcase what I'm all about even more. I have to say, I'm very happy. <laughs> and um, I'd like to thank my team. And we're just hearing for the people that are online now, we're just hearing from uh, Lerone Richards about his his victory now for the one that EBU. Yeah, Roy, time for him to make a statement. Uh, can't wait to, for that fight to come on now. Uh, Lerone Richards really impressed me, by the way. I, I actually became a fan of, of his now. I'm going to start following him on, on the gram. Good stuff. He put it together. He's worked so hard. Listening to Dave Caldwell now. Wanting to do. Um, he, just, he even saw glimpses of him working on the inside and getting more and more confident, getting more and more comfortable on the inside. It's a process. That's not the finished article. He saw glimpses of it and he's going to get better at it. Get, now he's done it under the lights. Surprising um, how this guy is, has had an eight year career and only fought, fought 15 times in England. It bothers me, man. That's a long career to have to only fight 15 times for Lauren Richards. Do you want to come back in there? Yes, well, just one last thing. I want to thank Eddie Hearn for giving me this opportunity. And, um, you know, picked up a, a real gem last year. And uh, I can't wait to showcase my skills in the future. Can I just come back to you there about something that Dave said? But if there's any questions online from anyone, it's can alone punch harder than his record suggests. Is that an issue at all? Or do skills pay the bills and you don't need to? You don't need to be knocking people out, stretching people out. Actually, skills are more important. I, um, I punch harder than what people think. And if people think I don't punch hard enough, walk through me then. Yeah, more for them. No, I can't let you go. Tyson Fury is the undisputed king of singing post fight. So you've mm -hmm. spent all week singing, so I'm not going to let you off now. So please, can you take us out? Oh, we're going to hear a singing. You know, we're going to hear a song you know, from Lerone Richards. Of course you can. Hard cross buttons. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a character is the own Richards. 15 and 0. is a sport that every week you think that's the weirdest thing that's ever going to happen. 15 and 0. The bar is raised again and again. Tell you what, what a great guy to be around this week. Lerone Richards has been his party's laid back. That is what you see. That is what you get. What a brilliant performance he was in the ring. And, and Dave Cole, I think, hit the nail on the head there. Alison and so did Lerone Richards. If you if you kind of hit hard enough, walk through me then. Exactly. Uh, he's a very hard guy to walk through. It's hard to cross buns. Unbelievable stuff. Ah, he is an unbelievable. Let me go follow him now. He always seems to he always seems to be with you when you don't want him to be with as well. Yeah. He's he's got a great future ahead of him, that's for sure. You can you can see this guy picking up yeah. a, a world title of some sort. Something you know, something has surprised me. Uh, down the road. Um, I think we'll uh, we'll see this guy compared 
Well. You joking? You sing Hot Cross Buns? That's the first time I've ever heard that song. And it's about the politics now of boxing. He is a nuisance and a handful and a nightmare for anybody. So Roy Next is going to be very, very carefully developed, isn't he? Yeah, the one thing we'll say, and then Norm Richards, he's uh, got the kind of moniker as, as, as the B. Sam Jones described himself as manager as the world's most consistent wasp. He said, I will get anyone, any fight in the world. And of course, managing Joe Joyce managed to get him some really good fights. He will be the mouth of fights that don't necessarily be cross buns. You know what, actually, what was the other guy's name? Well, today. And he will talk his way into a fight on his fight. Jason fight. Cunningham. So if there's any problems with Fuller and Richards, believe me, Sam will be doing everything in his power to secure those fights. And of course, Dave Cole will be getting his, as prepared as he, as he physically can. And I don't think anyone in the division will be watching him thinking that he's anything less than an extremely skilled fighter, as is. Joshua Duatzi. There is the unknown quantity of Daniel Dos Santos, who knows that upsets have been... Okay, the other guy was Dalton Smith. That was the one I was mostly impressed by. Joshua Duatzi came a little bit too close for comfort against Mark Franchance with a bad eye injury in the early stages of the fight. Got through that and made the change to go stateside with Virgil Hunter. The updates to... The awesome stuff, player, awesome stuff. As one of the legends of American boxing training made in the short time that they've worked together, if at all <laughs> all this man yeah to the table so little on him unbeaten and a puncher too joshua guazzi daniel dos santos light heavyweight good songs huh so you yeah I'll, I'll i'll put a playlist on the songs for when i get kids to to sing to them but i i like that one hot like hot cross buns that's awesome uh guys we're almost we're almost there uh Almost there for the, the big fights. Let's see, let's see. We've got about 10 minutes before we get there. He's talking about Bival. Uh, Joshua Boitzi is busy talking about uh, Bival at the moment. Obviously, he wants to make a fight one day. But let's see how he goes against Daniel Dos Santos tonight. Let's let's get over the first hurdle. Um, I'm trying to do a quick, another quick look at uh, Dos Santos. Is uh, I'm very interested in this. Uh, in this. He shaved his beard for tonight. Boitzi. You know, you have to stay focused on your own career. Let's look at Daniel Blender dos Santos. French. Age 30. Fought. You see him over the last few matching shows. One. Two. In his career, listen to this. Daniel Dos Santos in his whole career has fought two people with more wins than losses. He's had 15 fights. That means 13 guys he's fought that have more losses than wins. Bivol wants to fight Boatsi. Bivol did not impress me in the last fight. Looks like NXT. Yeah, Bivol. Uh, like, Bivol didn't look as good. And you know who's looking really good at the moment is uh, the other Russian guy. Um... One that's knocking everyone out. Arthur Bezabeef is looking really good at the moment. Joshua Blatsy speaking to Atty Borak on the Design Boxing Show. It was inspiring to meet you with a preparation for his win at the Pro Boxers a couple of weeks ago. How has that state side? WBA International Light Heavyweight title on the line. Blatsy versus Dos Santos. Let's see, let's see. Maybe Dos Santos stepped up to the, the plate. In Manchester. Joshua Blatsy. Come on, let's see some ring walks, peeps. Oh, you know what's going to happen? Aren't they going to do like national anthems as well? Oh, they're doing it. Ah, let's watch this cutscene. The debut. Joshua Boatzi on debut. An Olympian turned professional. The beginning of a measure. Oh, he pummeled this guy. Oh, this is so interesting, like, to watch, like, this video before... Ago, this is my life, this is what I'm doing. We're at the break to go for the victory. Many more to come. I can't wait until there's crowds back at fights, like, honestly. When is the main event? The main event should be in five to ten minutes' time. I think they might do, like, um, national anthems. 
like now, and then the main events will be on in like ten minutes. I'd say I'd, go, I'd say ten minutes. Yeah, but Arthur bets and beef knocks it on out. That's what I like. So I always ask my interviews, do you think you're going to win on points or knockouts? Success for knockouts. Look, both guys came in good shape, eh? Boatsy he was on the scale, weighted at a one. So the other guy, Dos Santos, came in quite a bit under Boatsy's weight, like two pounds under. Six two and a half. Well, Santos, though, himself, a very, very big light heavyweight, too. Yo, De Santos is actually quite big. But size means nothing in fights, unless uh, unless it's like a lot, a lot. But like this size between Boatsy and that means nothing if Boatsy comes out and bangs him out. Fights are buyer. Oh, I think I know that Johan Boiler. He's also used to stuff. Daniel Dos Santos. Who are those guys? I mean, who are those guys? I'll tell you who they are. The last six of them that he's won had a combined record of 48, 130. That tells you terrible, all terrible all records that Dos Santos has fought before. He's got rid of them all, including the fellow that he boxed last month, so he's fresh, got rid of them in a round, and he's got a lot of power, a lot of his stuff has come early. Okay, let's get to the fighter announcements, please. Uh, it's taking taking too long for my likings. Watsi's got some decent names. Quinlan is good. Perry Bond is good. Liam Conroy is good. Ryan Ford. Not bad names. Not bad names on his record. And now he's going to add Dos Santos to that list, most probably. Again, there are the 28 years of age, man. 28 years, six foot two. He's got a little bit longer reach than Dos Santos has. I don't know. I'm keen to see what uh, what Boatsy produces in this fight, man. That's this is what I've been waiting for all night. Good evening and welcome to one of the great fight cities of the world. Manchester, England. We are live on Sky Sports. Yeah, that's. But remember, remember, sort of boxing. That uh, Dos Santos isn't the house fighter Boatsy he is. But I suppose they're trying to sell him, right? They have to try. Like, and they didn't. They failed to sell him. Someone's getting fired in the morning. <laughs> the I don't know. If I was a commentator on DAZN, like I would call it out straight like that. I'd be like. Dos Santos has fought nobody. Okay, so Dos Santos is uh, coming out to a little bit of uh, Eminem. Which one is this? What is this song called? I know it's Eminem though. You know something, guys? This man is playing with house money. Nobody thinks he's got a chance. Everybody thinks he's here as the opponent, the stepping stone. Lose yourself. Lose yourself. What am I even wondering? Potentially, it's very dangerous indeed. Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of things we don't know about him. We know he's a member of Team World Sports Pro in the Royal France. He's not had much of a sport journey up on than we have. Uh, now these commentators are trying to sell him. Have you heard that now? Now the commentators are trying to sell Dos Santos, saying, oh, he could be an underdog. Uh, it could be the betting. Like he's obviously like far off the betting favorite. So maybe you want to put your money down on him. Let's see. But uh, next up is uh, Joshua Boatsy on the ring walk. Why they let him take it to points because it should have been a knockout victory. So it's only one man. 
very early stages of Boati's career that seems So Boati's got an extremely long um uh, like he's walking from like the the other end of the city looks like now set to make his ring walk. Please welcome the reigning, defending, undefeated champion, Joshua Boati. So they saw that one well. Oh, I like the song. Let me just shazam it. I had to do that one real quick. Now, oh, thanks for that like, whoever that was that just dropped a like there. Appreciate it. Let's see now. Now it's time. Watsi is walking out as we talk. He's walking down the ramp and he's on his way to meet uh, Dos Santos in the ring. Yeah, interesting to see what Virgil Hunter is going to bring to the, the corner of uh, Joshua Boazzi. See, let's see, let's see. Lawrence Okoli is good friends of Boazzi. Ladies and gentlemen from Manchester, England, live on Sky Sports and the Zone, we are set to go with the feature bout of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBA International Fight. There we go, the WBA International. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom. Right, so we're going to have to try and commentate this one. While while holding back the excitement of, of, the, of the bouts, we've been waiting for this fight the whole evening. Under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control and the World Boxing Association. The president, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. The supervisor is Dennis Gilmartin. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest. I don't understand what the point of Virgil Hunter wearing a mask would be going to leave his nose out there. Also from England, Ian John Honestly, I don't understand that. Why wear a mask? You think that uh, air can't go through your nose? And the seventh belt, your third man in the ring from Scotland, A star referee, Mr. Victor Lachlan. You know, it's also another concerning point is why these guys actually wear masks and stuff in the corner. Because they're in the bio bubble the entire time with everyone. So, surely, anyway, another topic for another day. This is it. The time has come. The Starts now! This guy's pretty passionate, eh? Just he's gonna say the, the names twice, which is very bothersome. He wears red trunks. He scaled 12 stone, 4 pounds, 12 ounces. His professional record, a perfect one. 15 fights, 15 victories, 8 of them coming by the way. Let's see, let's see. Daniel Dos Santos. Dos Santos. Dos Santos. Not the way he says it twice. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is the defending champion. He stands with his head trainer, Virgil Hunter. He wears the black and gold. He scaled 12 stone, 6 pounds, bang on. His professional record, also a perfect one. 13 fights. 13, 13 wins. 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Joshua Boetzi. But listen, guys, the fight's about to get underway now. As you hear, he's announcing Joshua Boetzi, giving him credentials. We're about to get serious now. We're about to get very serious. And watch this fight. Yeah, they're really, really. I mean, I to, to be fair, like 
Fawatsi is a good boxer, man. Let's see what happens now. Joshua Fawatsi. This, this ring announcer. Well, they're in the middle of the ring now, getting ready to go. Getting ready to do this, man. It's, uh, it's ready to rumble, man. Uh, they are about five seconds away from getting once Boatsy, um He's obviously having a little prayer, but once Boatsy gets up, they will be ready to go. They keep on saying the unknown Daniel Dos Santos. Well, let's see. Now you'll be known after he fights Boatsy. Boatsy with a nice, uh, j a nice jab up. Nice little pop on the jab there from uh, Joshua Boatsy. Oh, one jab for jab. Well, Boatsy has got the best jab of the evening. Like already in the first 20 seconds, like showing up. Nice one, nice one, nice one. It'll be interesting to see what. So, Dos Santos has a like, closed off style. Like, he obviously knows he's got to be careful. He's got like a nice tight guards. Oh, yeah, Boatsy's slipping a jab from Dos Santos. Dos Santos then uh, backing up a little bit. Yep, nice little, nice little feint. So he was going, Boatsy with a feint going up and then he dropped the jab to the body, which obviously is a deceptive. Deceptive. Nice little jab to the body. Yeah, so Boatsy is kind of just keeping the pressure. Nice there. Yeah. Right. Nice right hand then after that to the body there. First minutes is uh, Boatsy looking very sharp. Nice that. He's consistent with the jab to the body. It's one of his punches. Uh, establishing a rhythm nice and early. Oh, nice setup for that left hook there. Landed that left hook, by the way. Uh, did Boatsy on Dos Santos. Like he set him up there, like through the right hand, came down, bridged down, and came up with the left hook there. Very, very nice work. Nice. And then the nice, the, the nice thing is he keeps snapping it down to the body. Yep. Snapped it to the body, slipped, and Dos Santos missed the left hook. Now, Dos Santos has thrown, uh, interestingly enough, a nice little jab to the body himself before being landed with a, a right hook to the body from uh, Boatsy. Nice there, nice work there. Another jab to the body. Oh, nice thing, left hook for left hook. Got a bit trapped there to the Santos, but uh, it, got, it disengaged quite well. See, Boatsy got caught behind the ear there, but like he's, he's unfazed. There we go. Good right hand there from De Santos. Like a bit of a flicking right hand just to test the resolve of, of Boatsy. But Boatsy far landing the cleaner blows in round number one. Nice to see that. Boatsy got the jab that's just going to, he's just going to keep popping. He's just going to keep working. Well, nice stuff there. Oh, good stuff there. He's a well schooled boxer, is Boatsy. Nice, nice stuff there. Oh. Just got to be careful there on the disengage. There we go. Good round one for Boatsy. Actually, Dos Santos didn't disgrace himself there. It's just that he got, he, he, he's getting tagged up by a high volume puncher. Uh, from Soda Boxing, nice establishment of the jab. Got to agree with you uh, there. Uh, Boatsy's established his jab and made it quite prominent from the get go. From the get-go, he's established a good job there, Joshua Boatsy. Round number one has ended. I'd say one round down, one round to Boatsy. I'm going to type out my scorecards per the rounds. Ah, oh, well, I put a equals, but anyway, didn't really mean that. Uh, but uh, anyone else want to score? I mean, there's an obvious round. Maybe I won't even do it every round, but so, well, let's, let's see how the fight goes. Let's see how entertaining it is. You can fall asleep. No, I'm just joking. 
Where is the, uh, he in that position? So, so Dos Santos is is, is is kind of figuring that he needs to kind of wait on that on the jab and then throw the left hook. But because boatsy has got a good guard on the right, he's kind of blocking that shot and he's also like stepping up and disengaging and making him miss because he's a very intelligent fighter, is Boatsy. Well schooled, um, he knows like fundamentally like what to do. He's been a boxer for a very long time. And when I mean that, I mean like I'm including amateurs, obviously. But DeSantos doesn't look like, like it doesn't look bad. Ooh, Boatsy well, set him up for the left hook. Allowed it. I think Boatsy needs to give DeSantos a little bit of confidence and that'll open up the shots for him. Like there, DeSantos is done. Guys, DeSantos is down. Yeah, Boetti has power, man. Yeah, he, yeah. As a spot might be over before it's over. Oh, oh, that left hook. This could be a short night, actually. I do appreciate everyone that did come on tonight. Obviously, um, big ups to, to you for 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 supporting and obviously watching it uh watching the fights with me uh, whether you jumped on and off and whatever the patterns were that you watched i do appreciate the uh, you staying online and obviously watching a good night of boxing plus also watching the zone which obviously aaron wants to to watch i know i like boards i think uh I think that um, I was making a deal about him on, like a big deal about him on Instagram Live saying, come watch this one, Boats, he's fighting tonight. No, obviously, uh, the undercard as well. But I think next time I'll focus more on the on the main events. I think this was like a, a long night. Remember, this is my third stream. This one's two hours long. The other two were both an hour and a half, which means I've been here for nearly five hours talking to a camera, which is fantastic. But uh, yeah, let me get back to the boxing. Uh, so 30 seconds left. Obviously, Boatsy getting this uh, the knockdown. I think it's going to be an early night in the demo. I agree with you. Uh, I think this. Uh, I think the Frenchman's. Uh, I don't think he comprehended what level he was stepping into. But I mean, he's, sometimes guys just need an opportunity. He probably got like a good amount of money. He wants to test himself to see if he's at this level. And Boatsy is like a very test, tried and tested boxer. You know. Roy, you want to do it for me? I invite you. You can do it for me. Oh, man, the UFC. I want to do the UFC, though, to be honest with you. I know that this is a boxing channel, but the UFC would be interesting. Yeah. A real a real soldier, hey? A real soldier you are for turning that opportunity down. Uh yeah, Boatsy, ah, dominance in that round. No, but I'm kind of happy I, wa I wanted to, um, I'm kind of happy I wanted to do tonight's show, even though it was a bit lot, like long-winded and a lot of like, a lot of the the fights were like subpar names, I should say, except for like the last two fights before this. But uh you know what? Uh, it's sometimes worth it to see what's on the scene and who's who's around. Round number three underway. Let's see. Let's see. Round number three. Boatsy. Still keeping that jab, like fidgeting with it, and then he pops it like really nicely. Is Boatsy. Let's have a look at that. Our stuff. He wobbled him with that jab. Little momentary wobble, momentary wobble. Nothing, nothing, nothing to write home about. Good shots there. But the, the Frenchman Dos Santos is really um, taking more uh, more caution now. Oh, nice little uppercut there from the from Dos Santos. Using Everlast gloves. Oh, nice little left hook there. Nice stuff there. Who was on the undercard? Um, on the undercard was um, 
uh, Smith, he's a good boxer. What's his first name? I forgot his first name. I have it here. Hold on. I wrote down a list of the guys I'm following after this. Uh, Dalton Smith. Uh, and then uh, Jason Cunningham. I don't know if you'll know these names. And then Lerone Richards, who fought, who fought in the last fight, was really good as well. Lerone Richards can't really punch, but like he has a really good skill, though. So I credit him for that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like we like we like we're busy watching uh, Boatsy today, and like in a couple of fight nights' time, he, he, uh, like like when I mean fight nights, I mean like, like maybe like five six fights' time, he's in the ring with Canelo Alvarez. Uh, Dos Santos is coming back a little bit nicely in this third round. Still, probably Boatsy's round, but Dos Santos is definitely a lot better this round. Landed that sneaky uppercut earlier in the round as well, which 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 he scored nasty with. Oh, there's body work there from Boatsy. Really good chopping shots. Chopping shots. Nice stuff. Nice stuff. Ooh. Oh, that was so. Basically, a rugby tackle just happened there, but like a real like evil intention there from De Santos. He like put a proper shoulder in there. <laughs> Scottish referee, no nonsense referee. Yeah. Anyway, the guys are about to get underway again. Just a quick, uh, they got a quick uh, tongue lashing each. Uh, it's getting told just to concentrate on boxing. Don't worry about uh, the afterward stuff. Loving the fact that Everlast has been uh, has been uh, the boxing glove of choice for for much of the for much of the bouts tonight. A bit of a throwback then. Now, De Santos is coming on a little bit stronger now. He took two rounds to kind of get into it, plus the knockdown. Obviously, he got knocked down in the second round to kind of come into his own and like uh, give uh, Boatsy a fight. Round three is just about to end now. So round three, done and dusted. I still, I'd give that round though to Boatsy. Just higher volume punches, not the bigger punches. I think that uh, like De Santos landed some 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 decent armory there. But uh, still, Boatsy, for me, did more uh, in that round. Minus the rugby tackle from uh, Dos Santos, that is. How do you see Bival versus Canelo at 168? To be honest, like Bival didn't look so impressive in his last fight, um, as, as, as we were talking about earlier, actually, funny enough. Uh, so Canelo Alvarez, also like a tough, one of those two, two, two hard punches, uh, two technicians, but I think Canelo. I think Canelo on points. I don't think Canelo will knock him out. Tough, tough guy. Uh, but yeah, I think Canelo Alvarez would beat Bivol on points. Look at that! Hey? Look at that rugby tackle, man. Rugby tackle on 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 Dos, uh, on Boati there from Dos Santos. Like he really. So round number four underway anyway uh, between these two guys. Uh, you know, a 10-round fight for the WBA international title. Or Boati with some solid shots, but he's getting caught when he's coming on the inside. Oh, Dos Santos went uh, for, a, for a little bit of a sprint across the ring there for some reason. Off balance. Yeah, Canelo can, yeah, I think Canelo at the moment. It's hard to see someone beating him. Uh, Canelo Alvarez at the moment, man. Anyway, Boati, maybe it's Boati. Maybe he's the guy. Uh, but not, 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 at this, not at this moment, at least. Uh, but uh, yeah, Boatsy just controlling the pace of the fight. Dos Santos is like on the outside, kind of being calculated, but like trying to time him for the left hook there, but missed, missed Boatsy with the left hook there. Boatsy managed to throw the right hand to the sternum and get under that shot. Interesting topics though, like Canelo Alvarez versus Bivol. Uh, even Canelo Alvarez versus Caleb Plant coming up is a, is a, is a, is a good battle. Nice, nice body assault now from uh, Joshua Boatsy in the fourth round. After knocking down Dos Santos in the second round, he's sort of coming on even stronger now. I, th I thought Dos Santos had a good third round, but still not enough to 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 win it. I think Boatsy still won that round. So interesting enough, guys. If you come online, please hit that like button. Uh, would help, obviously, with uh, trying to get reach as many people as possible. So if you are new and you you following, please hit that like button. 
Uh, good shot there from Dos Santos. Good left, looping left hand over the top, uh, connected with uh, Boazzi there. But Boazzi's weapon is his jab. I agree with the commentator. Like, it's so true. Like, his jab is so crisp. Thank you very much for that. Like, I'm not sure it was, but I pre appreciate it. Ooh, good right hand to the body. Left hook followed up with a right hand over the top. He missed that last right hand, though. Dos Santos uh, escaping out of the out, out of a really good corner. Thank you for another like. Appreciate it. Ah, good shots here. Good shots. He's doing a great a great deal of inside work. A great deal of inside work. Uh, you know what the thing is about Dos Santos? He's like he's waiting to time like a really good hook or uppercut on Boatsy because he's obviously like on the back foot. Like he's not like some of the like there was a fighter earlier this evening who was just like on his bicycle on the ropes. And, oh, oh, my days! He's not that cold. Boatsy has knocked Dos Santos out cold with an overhand right. I hope he's okay. I hope he's okay. That was a devastating shot. Oh my days. Oh my word. I hope he's okay. Wow. 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 What a punch. Yeah. So, people at home, if you didn't understand what just happened, they just sent us to Scott, knocked out badly by Joshua Boatsy. Flip, he's still lying there. He's still down. Wow, what a punch. Boatia has just knocked out Dos Santos and... Uh, yeah, I hope he's okay because that was a heavy shot. I, just, I hope nothing happened. Let's see, they're putting him on the stool now. The referee, I mean, I think he got to like the count of three before he realized that this man's not getting up. He is sitting down, hopefully he's okay. They need to stop playing with his head so much. They need to do some checks, man. Concussions are bad, like, like a real thing. Wow. Guys, I'm just going to stay online. I know Boatsy's already knocked out the Santos, but I just want to stay online to kind of see the the end result of basically what's, like, if the guy's okay, like, the Santos, if he's okay, and also, like, stay online to hear what Boatsy's going to say when he gets on the mic with Eddie Hearn. I think uh, big things to come. He's a big puncher. He's a much bigger puncher than I even thought. I knew he had a good record, and I've watched him. But, man, that was sensational. My first thoughts were like, like, is this guy alive? Like, honestly, the way he fell. I hope he, I hope he's like. It's the first time the the Frenchman stepped up, so like, it's hard to like fight these fights and then step up to a guy like Boatsy who's been like groomed quite nicely. It's a difficult situation. Yeah, man. You see, Boatsy feels a bit bad, but it's boxing, man. We're getting to this business. It's the hurt business. Entertainment business, but it's the hurt business, too. Yeah, a lot of respect shown by Boatsy to his opponents. Obviously, his opponents still on the stool, still recovering from that big shot. But, uh, you know, Boatsy's shown a lot of compassion, man. He's shown a lot of compassion towards an opponent, which obviously there was a bit of, like, needle during the fight with the rugby tackle and everything like that. But, I mean, when when, when things like that happen, you know, the, the real man comes in. Good money, got to take the chance. Yeah, look, um, I agree. You couldn't turn an opportunity like this, especially when you're 15-0 and, and you haven't fought anybody yet. Like, you've got to know whether you're good enough, right? It's the question you ask yourself. And the other thing is obviously the money, but I think he also needed to ask himself like whether he was going to make it in the sport, you know? Mm -hmm. 
eyes, and sometimes you'll see someone press his buttons uh, it, at the press conference the way in, and you'll see his eyes change. Uh, What's the wrong one? Uh, it's kind of like a, a gangster in uh, London. Ah, yeah. But a roadman. He, he was he was in deep at one point, and he was you know he, he's he's got that strength. Shame, man. The the French the French fighter is in tears right now. He just I think the realization that he lost is is kicking in, and he obviously thought that he was perhaps a little bit better than what he was, and I think he's just realized now that he's been knocked out as well, which is you know depending on how he takes it. Yeah, I think oof, better beef is a is a big big step, a uh, big step. But uh, look, uh, I think maybe Buval first. I think better beef is better than Buval, so I think that Buval versus uh, Boati is uh, maybe the fight to make first. Now that's that's sportsmanship from Boati to 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 help out and go uh, give his commiserations to uh, the Frenchman Dos Santos's corner afterwards. Shame, man. That just proves to me that uh, Dos Santos really thought he was going to win this fight. Yeah, that actually like like no, you're not going to cry if you just came for the money. Like he. He, he came to make money, but he also came to win this fight. Like, he, he wants it to be a champion. Mm -hmm. well, Cheers, eh? Thanks for, I appreciate for, for uh, you for logging on tonight and obviously having a chat, uh, interesting comments, and uh, until next time, just hopefully it's soon. Let's see that knockdown again. Oh, that's a bad knockout. And then that punch halfway through on the way down as well. That reinforced. Yeah, there we go. Damn, that's a that's a big knock. That's a big knockout from Joshua Boetzi on. Daniel Dos Santos. Damn. No, like, look, Roy, I mean, like, obviously the pay must have been decent for Dos Santos, but, like, you don't tear up like that unless you have ambitions of becoming a champion and you really thought you were going to win this fight. So, like, I... You know, it's always sad in the aftermath just to realize that it just wasn't his night. But uh, who knows? Maybe he comes back and gets another chance on another show. Maybe another promoter. I don't know. Like, depends on who's willing to put him on. You know, he's now fight Boatsy, so you can imagine that a lot of like the British up and comers would look at him and say, "Oh, I can beat this guy," and then he's going to become one of those like symbols for like a stepping stone. But maybe he can come back and beat one of the prospects on the, on the up and coming circuits. But I hear the official result from uh, David Diamanti. Two minutes and 44 seconds of round number four. Your winner, by technical countout, is true, still true that. undefeated. And still, the WBA International Life And still the champion. Shame, man. He's a champion, Boetzi, in all senses of the word. Like, not just as a boxer, but like, his after-the-ring stuff as well proves to me that he's a good guy. Yeah, that's the real question. What's next? That's what I'm staying on now. What's next for Joshua Boatsy? Let's hear from Eddie Hearn when they get on the. I like when they like go on the microphone and say like Boatsy, Eddie. Let's see what they have to say because Boatsy, after that performance, has definitely elevated himself to a new level. Can you imagine though? Like, listen to this, right? Because Rainer Liebenberg's fighting for the WBA interim world title, can you imagine that Rainer Liebenberg versus Joshua Boatsy is the next matchup? If Rainer Liebenberg obviously wins the belts against Fedor Chudinov. That would be massive. Anthony Yard, I think. Lyndon Arthur might be a bit... See, the thing is, because Lyndon Arthur is a... I know he's a Frank Warren boy, so, like, I don't know. And so is, so is Anthony Yard. But I think uh, Frank Warren would rather put in Yard at this moment. I think they're trying to protect uh, Lyndon Arthur 
trying to build him up towards a, a world title at the moment. So I think that this guy could be like a big stop in that uh, dream. He is, but the next opponent has to be somebody by the fight. It's got to be a name we all know and recognize. Go, oh, this is a serious contender. This is a this is a long one. There we go. We might go to the 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 chats with uh, Boatsy and Eddie Hearn together, I think. Congratulations. Let's have a listen. Opponents can be dangerous and it can be unnerving at times. It didn't turn out that way tonight. You were a level above Damon Dos Santos. What do you take away from uh, tonight? Um, most importantly, I want to thank God for the victory. Most importantly, I've told you that. That's what it's all about. Secondly, I do hope he's safe and healthy. Um, what do I take from that? Like we said, we've seen unknown opponents come. They've beaten guys, so going in that, I took him very, very serious. Um, awkward for a few rounds. I just yeah, he was awkward for a few time. rounds. Um, but like I said, most importantly, I do hope he's okay. Um, what do I take from that? That was an opponent that I didn't know much about, I didn't see much of. Um, I had to work it out while I was in there. Can be tricky, probably look easy for the viewers, but it was different in that ring. Yeah. Um, so I, I take away, you know what? I, I, I classy, classy interview history. at the end from Boatsy. That's all I can take from there. Um, we'll be back. Quick turn over. Then before I start talking about that, Eddie needs to jump in and you need to ask the next question. But I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah, Boatsy wants Eddie to tell him what's next. That's that's fair, fair comments. Can drink, um, if you say, you know, chasing around, not getting to. I just want to show you the footage. Um, I thought you'd finish. I wonder if you can talk us through it. Certainly one of the cleaner finishes of your career. Yeah. So then I showed, I showed I was going to the body before no, no body next time, and it was to the head. Um, so he's out at that point. Did you notice straight away that as soon as he connected that it was over? Yeah, it's, it's a weird feeling, to be honest with you, but I wanted to make sure the job was done. Um, like I said, I, I looked downstairs. I came to the corner. Said, Look, oh, nice no shot there. Boatsy is definitely a great finisher. <laughs> what a punch! See, that's what that that's that 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 excites spectators. Like that sort of uh, that sort of uh, punching power and ferocity. After the Marco Cialic performance, there was some questions. It was a gut check that you came through. But did you feel deep down that you wanted to come out and prove something tonight? It's not very nice hearing negative comments about yourself. Or were you just clean slate, don't do it in the past, straight into the next one? And as long as they gave comments, man. And let me tell you one person that holds it down well, Eddie Hearn. Yeah, I, I learned a few <laughs> things from this guy. Everyone is going to say something, whether you're doing good or bad. Whatever it is you're doing. So true, man. It's so true. Eddie's a good promoter. He gives good advice to the boxers as well. What I want to read, and I don't read the mess because people always talk. Um, people close around me, that's what matters. Um, the career, the trainers, the coaches, the managers, that's, that's what it is. Um, but people always talk, um, and I'm sure people will be talking now as well. All will be positive, some will be negative, but it's life, man. No bumps or bruises. Fair, fair call from the man. Okay. Do, you, do you want to get straight back out? The frustration last time was it's stop start, it's stop start. You haven't really been able to capitalize on any sort of momentum. I spoke to Eddie this week, I think we mentioned about July times, June, July times, but if he comes on, you can ask him, but I'm all good, no injuries, no nothing. Yeah, yeah Boetsy wants to get back in that ring as soon as possible. Virgil Hunter, let's hear from him. Let's see what Virgil Hunter has to say for himself. Very a gentleman like interview from Visual Hunter. Three times before the end of the year, it's a lot. Joshua Boatsy is a world champion in the making, but we're 12, 18 months from that. Is that realistic? I think so. Uh, inside of two years, whether it comes in one year, or whether it comes in 14 months, I, I project that that's when you'll be ready. Uh, I really like what I saw with Mike the Faints. Uh, he kept his feet moving, he wasn't stationary, he was very alert. And he followed the structures, you can't ask for more. So I really like what I saw tonight. Virgil, thanks for joining us. Because of COVID restrictions, we have to swap people up. 
not to Eddie Hearn. Mm-hmm. I mean, just as much as <laughs> your camera, Eddie Hearn nearly got left hanging there, but it's, it's okay. We've yeah, Eddie Hearn's not going to have a chat with us. Very complimentary about the mindset that you've installed in him. First things first, uh, thoughts on the match tonight, um, Daniel Dos Santos. So Eddie Hearn's about to comment on the Eddie Hearn's about to comment on the main event tonight. As well, what Virgil just said there, 12, 18 months. I know that you feel that Joshua could perhaps go quicker than that, but it is a work in progress as a team. Yeah, I mean, firstly, shout out to Terry Harper, you know, who was going to be headlining tonight and broke her hand, and JB stepped up to the main event. But Santos is a good fighter, like Virgil said, of course. And, and like JB said, you're going to get people saying, oh, you know, he was levels below. But we've seen a lot of fighters that are supposed to be levels below come into this environment and cause massive upsets. Rich Lara with Josh Warrington, strap on against James Tennyson. So just because he goes the right way, you can't just jump on it and say the center. Should I put some volume up here? Because obviously, like, I don't know if you guys can hear. If you guys are following it on your own TV. He's devastated with a defeat because he's unbeaten fighter that came to win. What he came up against was a world-class fighter. And now what we must do is capitalize on the ability to gain momentum in Joshua Watts' career. There's been times before where you know, maybe we haven't got him out quick enough or he's popped off to a holiday or he's had a little injury. Now's the time where we must gain momentum. So July the 17th in America or July 24th or 31st, oh. headlining a big fight at fight camp. We've got to bridge that gap now. And also, what's it going to fight in America? Test the waters. Craig Richard, who did a brilliant job. Bivol is the level of the guys that he needs to be. Oh, to you see, they're talking about Bivol. We're talking about Bivol earlier. But we need to find that middle ground between Dos Santos and Dimitri Bivol. And that's down to the matchmaking of Virgil and 258 and the team. But the next one has to be a step up. He's ready for those kind of step ups. You know, if we keep talking about Sullivan Barrera. I know he's fighting Gilberto Ramirez, but he's the kind of guy that's going to tell you where Joshua Boats is at. And as Virgil said, between a year and two years, those kind of fights are going to tell you how ready he is. So he's true. Like Craig Richards, who just pushed Bivol. Yeah, I mean, look, that's, that's, sure. that's a fight. I mean, we're, we're all quite friendly. You know, I mean, I'm Craig, not that much but, major yeah, but, but, you know, at the end of the day, people like to see domestic fights. Craig Rich is just putting a great performance against Dimitri Bivol. I think if he believed in himself, maybe he could have even won that fight. He, he might even kick himself. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Joshua Watts, he's got to look at the opponents. Craig Richards, if that's a fight that can make, that's one that cert- certainly can get done as well. But, you know, I think we need to find that next level now. But we must keep the momentum. There's no reason why he shouldn't be boxing three times this year. Tonight was the first one on that list. July next. And, you know, you can go straight back into the gym with Virgil and, and keep learning, keep improving. Don't forget, he's been out of the ring for seven, nearly eight months. And he's got a new trainer tonight. So that was a big box tick to say he's back, he's sharp, brutal knockout, onto the next one. Just finally, JB, before you go, so will the plan be have a couple of days at home, spend time with your family, and then zip back to the Bay Area uh, in America? Yeah, man, I've I've been with him for weeks and weeks and weeks, so uh, I look forward to just having a week or so. Like Eddie said, no holidays, man. I'll be in England, and then um, whether we go back to America and start camp again, or we start from here and we finish out there, whichever way around. But I'm grateful, and I thank my team, everyone, the support from everyone. Good shot. Can't get back to everyone, and also Matchroom Strasbourg. So you guys give me after this. If you slow online and you want to ask any questions, I will stick around for like five minutes. If you guys do have any questions, otherwise I'll be ramping off. You guys. Again, moves on. So I'm going to put on the volume on the TV now. If you guys do have any questions, I'll be on for like five minutes. And then, uh, yeah, we can basically finish with that. So I thought it was a, a decent night's fight. Um, obviously, finish with the best fight of the night, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of how boxing is. If you have any questions, rank them up now. The fight night's obviously over. If not, I shall bounce and I shall leave you. Thank you for all coming on tonight, obviously. I'll wait for two minutes. If there's nothing, if there's no comments, then I'll just log off. Yeah, very hard not to like Boatsy. Uh he's a, he's such a nice guy after after the after the fight to kind of like, you know, just be classy like that. And like, you know what's also nice about him? He can actually box. Like he's a really good boxer. I think that's also the nice part about Boatsy.
still gonna wait. So wait one more minute, one more minute, and then I'll bounce. Thank you everyone for that came on tonight. Obviously a lot of people have dropped off now, uh, but I appreciate everyone that did come online and you know showed face and you know just wanted to hang out and have a chat. I really do appreciate that. Something new that I want to do more often is this live stream stuff. So yeah, hopefully on the bigger fight nights. Obviously, it's not wasn't the biggest fight night, so the attendance wasn't huge. But hopefully, more and more people have joined on. All right, that's that. Thank you so much, uh, guys. Again, uh, I'll see you next time. Are you enjoying these live shows? Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the view. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate everything. Cheers, cheers.